I've had this slab of walnut air drying in my backyard for about a year now, so I was really excited to cut into it. I cut a piece at around 17 inches and then send it through the planer on my sled since it had a bit of a twist to it, and it is gorgeous. I printed out a template online and then used some spray adhesive. I waited two minutes before actually putting it on the wood. That way the glue sets up a little bit and it's not so sticky and it's not hard to remove the paper after you're done. This is really only my third or fourth time ever using a bandsaw. So I thought this would be a fun project to experiment with since it has those tighter curves and also some looser curves around the edges. I did two different methods for doing these tighter curves, one doing relief cuts and one without the relief cuts. Um, I'm not really sure when you would need to do the relief cuts because I found that it was harder to sand away in those areas afterwards. I'm not really sure when you would need to do that. Um, maybe it depends on what kind of blade you have, what kind of curve you're doing. I really, I'm really not sure. Anyway, after just following the line slowly, it was finished. And because I let the glue set up on the paper beforehand, it was really easy to take off. Now I just had to clean up all the rough edges that was left by the bandsaw. I don't have a spindle sander, so I got these attachments that I got on Amazon. I'll have the link down below, and I put it on my drill. And then I realized I have a drill press. <laughs> so then I attached it onto my drill press, and it was way easier. And then I took it to the disc sander to clean up all those outer edges. Nice and smooth. Since this is a live edge board, I still needed to clean up some of the bark that I had missed earlier. I just used my chisel to clean it up gently, because I still wanted to leave that natural edge to it. What's cool about using a live edge board for a cutting board or a serving tray is that the natural edge of the wood acts as handles. Like if there's like a little indentation and you could easily lift the board up off the counter or table wherever you're putting it down. After getting all the edges nice and smooth, I used a round over bit in my router to just break all the edges. Now this is the most important step. You must make a fool out of yourself and play some air guitar. Now that we got that over with, uh, it was time to finish sanding. So I like to mark up the board with a pencil to make sure that I got every spot of the board to make sure it's evenly sanded. And finally, the finish. I soak it in mineral oil overnight, and then I do about three coats of mineral oil and beeswax to make it a little bit more waterproof. If you want to make this project and you don't have a bandsaw, you could easily use a jigsaw. And if you're wondering where to get wood like this from, I got this on Craigslist. So just because you don't have these tools or you don't think you know where to get all this stuff from, you could easily make it work and find a way to make it work somehow. Well, here's the finished product. This was so much fun to make that I decided to make another one. This Gibson is going to a friend, but this fender is going to be up for sale on my website once I get it all finished and oiled up and everything. So follow me on Instagram. I will definitely post a shop update on there. And I hope you enjoyed this build. I cannot wait to make more of these. <laughs> If you like this video, consider subscribing, check out my website, or watch another one.